I got into the electronic data because I was interested in human factors. And I got the first download. I worked for Dr. Ed Robinson after I left. Dr. Ed convinced me I could do better than $14 an hour to work security at the bowling alley. Um, and uh, we, I saw the first truck download, and I said, my gosh, this is driver inputs. Let's, let's start using this stuff. And seven years later, I'm at a Society of Automotive Engineers conference with a professor from Virginia Tech who tells me, you know, we're going to start using this stuff to look at driver response. Isn't that neat? I went, you think? That's <laughs> what got me into the whole thing. I spent a bunch of time learning, this, learning about, about the truck downloads. And, and as of today, um, ooh, that's turning it off. Um, I, I am the lead instructor for Northwestern University's course on interpreting and preserving this data. Uh, I'm back this when I came back Wednesday night from teaching the New York State Police Northwestern's class. My co-instructor is still stuck there in Albany so that I can be here. Um, and what I want to do is not teach you guys what we taught the New York State Police, but teach you what I think most attorneys and insurance adjusters don't know about it so that I get a call and I'm much less able to help. Um, I want to go over a few acronyms. This is, this is the worst. This is like the military with nothing standardized. Every single one of these has a different uh, acronym. And you will hear people preach against the term black box. And when I hear somebody beating their chest about, oh, don't call it a black box, what's going through my head is rookie. Because as long as we know what we're talking about, and as long as I can convey to you that this is not a flight data recorder, black box like I heard about when I was a kid and a plane crashed into the 14th Street Bridge in Washington DC and as long as you can grasp that this is going to record about 10 different things or 30 different things and voice isn't one of them and it's an emissions tool for the EPA we're good let's call it a black box half of them black anyway so and by the time they're greasy they all are um, so this is what one of them looks like. Basically, this is the computer that sits on the truck. Part of it sits in the cab in some, system, in, in some systems. And it runs the diesel engine. It regulates the emissions. It's why a Mack truck can sit on the 405 freeway in California and pump out cleaner air than it's sucked in. Um, it also has a lot of neat driver management tools in it, one of which is event data collection. If you see, I get two reactions to looking at a, at a black box download, ECM download, EDR download. I'm going to say black box unless somebody throws stuff at me. Um, one, and I get this from students, and I get this from attorneys and insurance adjusters. One is I don't speak math. If I knew math, I would have gone to med school. I didn't, so I, I know nothing about this. The other is, ah, oh, that's all simple. It's just, it's speed down that column with time, and there's nothing to it, right? Uh, the course I just got finished teaching, the basic introductory course for New York State cops, most of whom had master's degrees in something, um, or for the students that we taught at Tulsa University through their engineering continuing ed program, the course I wrote is a 40-hour course. That's the intro course. We're working on the advanced course because we can't get into enough of the analysis of the data in one solid week where guys stay late in class until 6 and 7 o'clock at night while we lecture till we can't talk anymore. Um, and that I bring that up, not to impress you with how smart I am, I'm speaking after a neurosurgeon who is clearly far smarter than I will ever be. Um, but so that when you go to retain an expert or a consultant, you get somebody who's been trained. You get somebody who took my class, or you get somebody who took the SAE class, you call me, or you call one of the people in the state or in the southeast that knows something about this. You may have, and I have no problem with this, Gary Johnson, who, who works in Birmingham also, has no problem with this. You may have a go-to reconstructionist who, for whatever reason, in this case, you want to do the reconstruction. I do crash recon, too. I will be in no way, dis no way offended if you say, just go get this data for me. Tell me what's in it. You, you be my, my, my electronic data expert. Hey, that's, that's no problem. Um, but get somebody who knows what they're doing. 
Um, so I want to just go through this, this quickly, and hopefully I'll, I'll uh, catch the, the schedule up a little bit. Kind of what's the big deal? I'll show you a case study. Um, talk a little bit about what vehicles have data, how it can be preserved, and, and how it can be used. Uh, I got hired uh, working for a personal injury attorney. This case was in Texas. That's I-20. Um, that's the passenger vehicle uh, that was tied up in this. Uh, it's a uh, mother and family on their way back from soccer practice. You know, it's rainstorm. Uh, this truck crossed onto the other side of the highway, uh, and there's clearly no way anybody was going to avoid that. Um, here's the physical evidence leading up to the crash site. I am remiss for not including this on either the handout or in here and saying it specifically 20 times, so I'm going to say it with this slide. You may have a case that you're not sure what you're going to do with, no matter which side you're working on. And you don't know how big it's going to be, how much money you want to spend, but you know there's black box data and you know you want to get it preserved. Do something to preserve this kind of physical evidence. Send an investigator out with a camera to take pictures of it. Get somebody to map it. Depending on the size, the scale, the scope of the case, you know, it may be a three-dimensional laser scan or it may be just 30 digital photographs and somebody walks down the road with a roller wheel. Get this. Electronic data in a vacuum is super, super, super dangerous. Um, I, I, I wrote this really arcane statistical paper about predicting when the time of impact is and right after it was published I had an attorney call me and, and I, I fell for it. He, he shows me the, he, he sends me the, the data. He says, can you interpret this for me? And I start interpreting. I was okay, well, here at this time is when the passenger car got hit. And all I know is the passenger car got hit by a truck and everybody died. Well, here's where the passenger car got hit. And, and I can tell that because of the change in wheel speed. And I just wrote a paper about it and on and on and on. I, I said, the truck driver was braking about two seconds before impact. And he says, well, gee, the truck driver told the state trooper he was asleep when this happened. What are you telling me? The truck sideswiped the passenger car, just hit him enough to knock him off the road. The passenger car, which was catastrophically damaged, was catastrophically damaged from the trees. When the guy woke up, he was going off the road, and this huge spike that I see in the data download is him, the truck driver, hitting the trees. If somebody had shown me three pictures of the crash site, I'd have saved all the napkins it took to wipe the egg off my face from trying to explain to this guy the wrong thing about his crash. And fortunately, this is like 10 minutes into the case on the telephone, and I never had to admit to that until uh, you know, later on. Electronic data doesn't help when you don't know the circumstances of, of the crash, so get it. If you send somebody like Barry Hodgins out to take 100 pictures, lock them in a vault, and just say, maybe I'm going to need these, or maybe it is what it is. So here's the kind of data that you can get. This is actually a small piece of the data from that truck. Um, vehicle speed, engine RPM, brake, clutch, engine load, throttle, cruise, diagnostic code. Um, this is a misnomer right here. It says vehicle speed. If, you, if I have to analyze this, and, and I, I may wind up telling you that's the wheel speed, and that can be different from vehicle speed. That's getting kind of picky for this here. But you can see the kind of data, and in this case, we can be pretty sure, hey, look, this guy's going 76 miles an hour, and uh, slows down, comes to a stop. The deal is the trooper, who was a year out of the academy, said he was scared to death to go 65 miles an hour, lights and sirens running through this multiple fatality accident. As you see, the truck driver thought nothing of 76. When you can outrun a rookie trooper by 10 miles an hour, you're doing pretty good. Because uh, I drove like a madman right out of the academy. That, one of the folks before was talking about can't happen to you. <laughs> can't happen to any rookie cop. Um, the truck driver said it was raining heavily, and he said that the fastest he's ever driven is 65 miles an hour, ever. Except maybe, maybe, maybe as a rarity, over 65 miles an hour. Except right before this crash happened. Um, 
the issues in the case from an accident reconstruction standpoint, um, the driver gives testifies in his deposition he's slowed down to 50 to 55. He has a quote unquote witness behind him who is a truck driver for a company with a terminal right next to his who's following him in a passenger car. Texas DPS gets there and says the two of them are talking to each other when I get on scene. Uh, then they deny in both their depositions ever talking to each other. Um, there was an issue with the preservation of the data that wound up uh, probably making, well, it worked in the plaintiff's favor because the issue was created by the defense, but it also enabled me to spend, forced me to spend many more hours. The whole reason I got into this case was the defense challenged this data. The challenge in the data ultimately was you didn't preserve it right. And with a lot of work, we could show that the data was good and show that it was their expert, quote unquote, fault for not preserving it. Um, this issue with a procedural issue with the way that the download was done. So here's some historical data from the ECM. You remember this is the guy who says he never goes over 70 miles an hour and only very rarely, like 36% of the time he's driving, goes over 65. Um, this historical aggregated data, this is an owner operator. Um, this typically, I'm told, isn't admissible because it's aggregated over like the whole life of the truck and like the last eight years this guy's driven. I don't know anything about admissibility, but in this case, it made the truck driver look bad, and it was admitted. Um, the other side of this, I went to Kentucky and downloaded a truck, and uh, I noticed in there this truck has a sudden deceleration counter. And I noticed that this uh, truck has a half a million miles on it, and the sudden deceleration counter is at one. And the plaintiff's attorney who'd hired me to go up there says, you know, I'm not really sure about the circumstances of this case and the bridge, and we haven't worked out all the sight lines, but the defense lawyer is telling me they're going with sudden emergency. What do you think? And I went, well, just based on the fact that this driver has had one hard break in a half a million miles, it, it might have been a sudden emergency. Um, they did a little bit, a couple more days worth of investigating into the case and did not spend any more money on it. Um, you know, that's good. That, that, this is a lot of wasted money that didn't get wasted on that. I think it actually got wasted by somebody else. But, uh, you know, it, it, no matter what this data is, it, if we get it, it, it's helpful. Whether it's helpful to decide you don't want it or whether it's helpful to decide that you do want it or helpful to, de to decide uh, that the driver is a cretin. We go into about a three-hour lecture in the using ECM data class, especially for the cops like, like NYSP, um, on how to evaluate this data so you can better interview and interrogate uh, um, a suspect driver. Um, how to get questions out of this, this, this historical data that's showing how he or she normally drives a truck, uh, how to turn those into interview and interrogation questions. Um, so the next section, you know, whether you have data. By the time most of us in this room retire, every single crash will get electronic, will, will give us some kind of electronic data. Um, as of now, we're stuck with about 95% of brand new trucks, about 35 to 40% of everything on the road, passenger cars, it's higher, it's accelerating because of uh, NHTSA rule, uh, NHTSA's uh, regulations. Um, uh, so almost everything currently in production, okay, this is a simple concept. Um, this data comes from the engine control module. And for those of you who don't deal a lot with trucks, trucks are customizable. So the engine and the brand on the front bumper are usually two different things. Like, and, and I'll show you an example of it. Um, another thing, don't, don't confuse trucks and cars. If you're not sure if this is a truck rule or a car rule, uh, just you know, call somebody and ask. If you're not sure that the attorney or the adjuster on the other side is playing straight with you about how they're going to go about preserving the data, or if you don't think they know what they're talking about, um, make sure that you're applying truck rules to truck and car rules to car, because they, they can get confusing. My partner went to Nebraska or to Nevada for the 
uh, at the behest of a major corporation out there that said, hey, we need to preserve this data. And he, he gets out and he downloads their engine and he has three sudden heartbreaking events from the day before he got there. I mean, these people are paying us good money to fly all the way to Las Vegas to download their truck. And, and it was intentionally overwritten the day before. He says, well, what happened? The adjuster tells him, well, we haven't turned the key 125 times. We were really careful. And he says, no, 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 that's passenger cars. What did you do yesterday? He says, well, the cops wanted to skid test this thing to see how easily it had come to a stop, so we let them skid test it. We don't want to make the highway patrol mad. Overrode all their data. So don't assume that the other side, just because they own the truck, has any flipping clue how to preserve the data, because they don't generally. But this is what I'm talking about. This is one of the trucks that we tested when we taught the, as a, you know, a test for our students uh, in Evanston when we taught the course this winter, obviously. Um, this is an international truck. You can see the branding right there, ProStar. That is a Cummins engine. You see the nice, pretty, the, the old truckers call them a redhead. Um, but you'll see that repeated throughout most of these. Uh, sure. So that's an, that's an international brand truck. You'll see the, the international, har old, what used to be International Harvester logo right there, uh, right here on the front. You see ProStar, which is the international kind of model on the door, and that's a Cummins engine. And there's a the little C, you can barely see it, the little C Cummins logo there. Um, the way you tell, get the VIN number. I'd be cautious of police reported VINs. When I was a cop, there's no telling how many VINs I copied down wrong. It's late at night, you're trying to read that little number with a flashlight, and you don't realize how important it is to some, some guy like me, even if you care and try to do a good job. Um, so there are some differences here. I've tried to list them for you. Uh, trucks, this is you know, the data recorder. It's an engine management tool. Cars, it's a safety system management tool. Uh, one's deploying airbags, one's regulating emissions, but you know, kind of first and foremost. Very, very easy to alter, erase, or overwrite in trucks. There is never anything in a truck that locks the data. Um, in cars, usually you have an airbag deployment, seatbelt pretension, or safety system activates to protect the driver. It, it, you know, the manufacturers want to lock that data in there and preserve it for themselves. Nothing like that in trucks. Some similarities they have, published, peer-reviewed, high, highly accurate when properly interpreted. Um, this, this, is, this is good stuff. It's not new and novel. There are dozens of papers going back to a friend of mine, Dewey Myers, in 1997, wrote the very first crash investigation paper about this. Um, there are known anomalies, things that somebody like me has to ferret out and say, oh, no, we know that this particular Cummins engine series does this differently and we have to interpret the report differently and we know that if we make these changes the data are, are then good. None of them were really originally or specifically designed for us um, but they've been shown to be useful and practical and, and, and helpful. Um, you know my final thought this is the, this is the most frustrating field in the world sometimes because in a, in a lot of cases the cases, in a lot of times, the cases where you most want data, you get nothing. Um, the, the retention uh, of data is just, there are too many ways you can legitimately lose data. Um, and it's, it, it, can be real, it can be real frustrating. Uh, it's frustrating on my end, it's frustrating on my clients. And um, so if you guys have any questions, you should have the PowerPoint, uh, the, present, the, the, the handout that went around, hopefully you find that useful, and I believe you guys are going to get the PowerPoint and email. Uh, call me if you have questions. Just, just hypothetically, 